Any idea what lenses are? Yes, Sara. They are objects which refract, refract the light in such a way that we can magnify and make them make the things smaller. Okay, that was a good lens. Yes. Uh, our lens is a curved transparent surface, uh, which is made up of usually from glass. Okay. Or, or sometimes from plastic. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, you, you guys have an idea regarding what um, a lens is. But, okay. So, yes, it can be made up of glass. It can be made up of plastic. Basically, any material that can allow light to pass through. Okay, any material that can allow the light to pass through can um, uh, can be used as a lens. Okay, um, so in our last class, if you remember, we did a refraction and I showed you two uh, sorts of prisms. One was a rectangular prism, if you remember, one was a rectangular prism, uh, which had two sides parallel, right? And the other yeah. one... Yes, and the other prism was triangular. Yeah, with where the two sides are not parallel to each other. Can be triangular, can be any shape. But the idea was when when the two surfaces, I mean the surfaces on which the light is falling and the sur and the surface where the light is leaving the prism, they are not parallel to each other. So lenses are also a sort of a prism. Prism meaning made up of a material that is allowing light to pass through it, but it is slowing the speed of light and there, as a result of which the light slows down, right? And as a result of which the light bends, okay? So there is refraction. So convex and, so we have two types of lenses, okay? Uh, according to their shapes, okay? One is convex, which is thickest at the center, and thin at the two ends. And then we have concave lenses, which are thinnest in the middle and they are widest or thickest at the two points. Okay, but they are made up of transparent material, can be plastic, can be glass, and they bend the light because they decrease the speed. Now, why, uh, now convex lens, how do they, they differ in the way they bend the light? Okay, convex lens, what convex lenses do is that when the light when the light rays are falling on the convex lenses they converge they converge like this okay whereas diverging the light rays which are falling on the concave lenses they diverge now why is that why is it that the convex lenses are converging the, le uh, the light rays, whereas the concave lenses are diverging the light rays? Any idea? Yes, Zainab, your hand is raised. Yes, miss, because uh, one of my friends cannot find the link. So uh, is it okay if I share her the link so that she could join? Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Okay, miss. Okay, so... Any idea why these two lenses behave this way? Uh, is it because in the middle the convex lens is thicker, and in the and for the concave lens it is thinner at the center. That's why it diverge. Yes, Sara. I think it's because it depends on where the <laughs> lens is thicker and where the lens is. <laughs> Please, please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Yes, yes, Sara. I'm sorry about that. I yes. think it depends. I think it depends on where the lens is thicker and where the lens is thinner. Uh, in convex lens, for example, at the bottom and at the top, the light, since the it is thinner, the light will diverge less. Okay. Okay. Now, if you remember my last class, what was the refraction like on a triangular prism? Do you remember? If the light is falling this way, okay, remember how we did? And if this yes. is, yeah, and this, if for example, this is the normal, okay? And so 
uh, uh, because the prism is denser, so the, uh, the prism will slow down the light. And when the light is slowed down, it bends towards the normal, remember? It was something like this, okay? And then, yes. uh, and then again here, the, the normal is this, okay? And uh, so uh, it will now move away from the normal, right? So would be this way. Okay, something like this. So can you observe, I want you to observe one thing, which is that the light, now this, you know, this diagram is not perfect. Okay, of course, I mean, this is not uh, exactly uh, to, according to scale, but just a rough diagram. But what I want you to appreciate here is that, can you see that the light is bending towards the base of the prism? This is the base of the prism, right? This is the base, but you know, this prism is like a pyramid. Think of it as a pyramid, okay? Have you seen pyramid? You know what a pyramid is, right? So think of it yeah. as a pyramid. So you can see that the light is bending towards the base, okay? If you now invert this prism and make this the top, make this side the top, again, the, and you know, the light will refract the same way, no matter what you do, no matter in what position, you will keep it, but the light will always bend towards the base. I want you to understand this. I want you to appreciate that the light is always bending towards the base. Okay, let me show you this. Look at this. Maybe this is a better diagram. Can you see the light is bending towards the base? Can you see here in this diagram? Okay. And even here in this diagram, the light is bending towards the base, okay? Now, once you have appreciated that, now I want you to look at this. Let's, let's concentrate on... Walaikum as -salam. Let's concentrate on the convex lens, okay? Now, the convex lens is... Let's think of it as, you know, I don't get time to prepare for these because you know I have to teach my own kids as well so I don't I, I cannot prepare for these classes the way I would love to prepare if I had time but I don't get time but anyway bear with my okay so think of think of the convex and this diagram is also given in your book think of this convex lens as made up of these small prisms stacked on top of each other now look at them. This is also triangular, okay? But the base is here. The base is here, right? So when the light will fall on it, it will bend towards the base. Yes, yeah, please, please try not to unmute yourself, okay? First raise your hand. So the light will bend towards the base. This is the base of this pyramid, this prism, okay? Now look at this prism. Again, this is not exactly triangular, but this, it is a still a prism and this is a wider base. This is a wider base. And so again, the light will bend towards the base. Now, this which is at the center and which is the thickest in case of a convex lens, I am right now discussing convex lens. This central prism has two parallel sides. And we have already appreciated that on a parallel, when the two sides are parallel, the, li the light does not bend the because the emergent ray is, is parallel to the incident ray. Incident meaning falling, emergent mean the one which is leaving. So the emergent and the incident ray are parallel, therefore same direction, undeviated, right? Now this prism is now upside down. This prism is upside down. Now the base is up, okay? The wider part is facing up. Now the line, when the light ray passes it, it will bend, it will get refracted towards its, its base. Now the base is upwards, therefore the light will also get bent upwards. Here, look at the base, uh, look at the last uh, prism. The base is facing up. It's like an inverted triangle. So the light will get refracted towards the base. Okay. So as you can see, 
as you can see that they are all if you if you now extend them they will all meet at some point if you extend them they will all meet at some point that is why convex lenses are converging lenses that's how they converge because each one of these behaves as a prism itself okay and they refract the light towards their respective bases except for the central one which lets the light pass through undeviated because it has two parallel sides okay am i clear here still here yes miss okay. yes miss yes miss okay now who will explain me the uh, concave lens why does it diverge yes sara good job because because uh, when you uh, like distribute it in different parts you will see that the base is on the top so it will uh, bend towards the top the first tree on the top it will bend towards the top right right so look at this diagram very good sara yes look at this diagram i don't know if i have to draw it is it clear should i draw it or will yes, we or will this diagram no, no, it's clear yes okay good so wait let me yes so you can see that they have split this um uh, concave lens into individual prisms now you can see the widest part is facing at the top again the the widest part is at the top and so again the ray is being bent towards the base of the pyramid it's always like that okay now the central one has parallel side so the light is passing through it undeviated here again the base is now facing downwards okay here again the base is facing downwards base means the widest part the widest part is facing downwards so the light is being bent towards the base so the way they come out of each of each of these prisms is that they are diverging meaning going away from each other so if you extend these lines they will never meet on the right hand side of the lens they will not meet on the emergent side like if i extend these rays they will not meet in fact they will go farther and farther away from each other okay so that is why the concave lenses are divergent they are also called divergent lenses okay now then we have a, a couple please mute yourself mohammed you are constantly unmuting yourself and you have a lot of background noise okay now uh, let's familiarize ourselves with a few terms that are very important to understand uh where did my marker go okay the terms that are important are first of all what is the um, optical center so you know in ray diagrams we don't always make a convex lens this way we just represent it with the help of a straight line we just make a straight line and we can label it as you know our convex lens and i think we have only convex lens included we do not have concave lens okay okay so um optical center is the is the center of this central block remember the uh, the one with the parallel side the one with the parallel side the center of that central block is called the optical center through which when the light rays passes it stays undeviated okay that is the optical center so optical center definition is what is the the center of a lens here this is the definition of the optical center by the way these definitions are very important not just to write them down but even for your understanding the center of a lens is its optical center c the line through c uh no this is not the definition where is the definition uh okay i cannot see it but Uh, the optical center is that part of is the center of the lens through which the light passes undeviated okay now 
uh, what is the principal focus? Then we have another term called principal focus. Principal focus definition is. Yes, you want to you want to tell me the definition? Yes, uh, this is the point on the principal axis where parallel rays are, are converging after refracting from convex lens. Right, so that's the definition. So what is a principal axis? For that, we will also need to know what is a principal axis. May I? Yes. The, it is a line uh, which passes through the center of the lens at right angle to the lens is called principal axis. Yeah, right angles to the lens. That means if you let uh, 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 right angles to the line which is passing through the center of the lens. Okay, so this will be the optical center, which is right at the center of the central block through which when light passes, it stays undeviated. Okay, and this is going to be the principal axis. Why? Because this is a line which is passing through the optical center and is at right angles to the center of the lens. It is at right angles or perpendicular to the center of the lens. Okay, do we have any term for this line? No. Okay, and then now we can understand what is principal focus. Principal focus is a line on the principal axis. Let me draw it here. And we usually use the symbol F to represent it. Okay, the definition is that when a line which is parallel to principal axis, now this line is parallel to principal axis. It refracts through the prism to pass through a point. That point is called the principal focus. Okay, I'm repeating the definition of a principal focus. It is that point on the principal axis where an incident ray, which is parallel to principal axis, refracts through the prism and then passes through a uh, principal focus that point, or it passes through a point on the principal axis, that point is called the principal focus. Okay, now, uh, now remember, uh, uh, where, will you, where will you have an image formed? An image will form wherever more than one light rays converge. Wherever more than one light rays converge, at that point, you're going to get the image, okay? Uh, before we do the ray diagrams, I want you to know a few things. Uh, okay, how can we find out the, uh, the principal focus of any lens? How can we find out the principal focus of any lens? Okay, now I'm going to just draw a simple line. Okay, they have shown this diagram, they have shown this um, experiment here. This is the way to find the principal focus for any lens. So if, for example, you don't know the principal focus of a lens, you are going to get a meter ruler Okay, and a screen or wall, a screen or wall. Okay, and we will use light from from window. Why are we using the light from window? Why can't? Why aren't we using a light source? Any any idea? Why are we using light from window, and why cannot we use a light source? Nabil? Yes, because it's uh, sunlight and it is sunlight. So that doesn't matter. Yes, any idea? I'll give you a hint. It is natural. I'll give you a hint. We want parallel rays. Now, any idea? Why did we use sunlight? Why are we using sunlight coming through the window? Yes, Dana. Is it because that's a focus, principal focus? Sorry, because? It is a principal focus point, F. So it's parallel. 
see we want the incident ray to be parallel yes we want the incident ray to be parallel so why because remember the definition of principal focus that's the point on which a light which is parallel to the principal axis is refracting through the prism and then crossing the principal axis so we want the incident ray to be parallel right because only if that ray refracts through the prism and then passes through the principal axis i mean you know at the point where that ray will form the image will give us the principal focus therefore we want the incident ray to be parallel now if we use a light source that source is going to be uh you know some miss some, your voice is breaking a lot okay uh i don't know what to do about that okay so um uh, we want the rays to be parallel okay and so oh, what is the way to have a parallel beam so if the object is very distant you know like very very distant such as sun rays sun uh, such as sun then the coming rays are almost almost parallel not not absolutely parallel but yes almost parallel so as you take the source of light farther away the the beams of light become sort of parallel okay because if the source of light is too close the beams are not going to be the in the incident or the incoming rays from that source are going to be divergent they are not going to be parallel whereas we want parallel rays rays that are parallel to the principal axis okay so in order to get those parallel beams we would rather use sun rays entering through the window did you get me did you understand now why we are using window yes miss yeah instead of the light source because we want parallel rays and that is only possible if the source of light is pretty distant and what can be more distant than sun right so you know that would give us almost almost parallel be, uh, rays or parallel beams of light okay and then we will move this uh, screen yes. so yes okay so i was i was going to ask yes i was going to ask that why does when the um, when the source of light is distant why does it make a parallel ray like wouldn't it reflect and refract so it will be more scattered no beta i said almost parallel almost see no uh, so shouldn't the shouldn't the shouldn't the source that is close it will be more like it will give more parallel rays because the rays will not reflect and refract that much see beta uh the rays that you receive from the sun they are just coming directly from the sun they are not reflected or refracted through anything yes they do uh you know like there are minor refractions and reflections but we are ignoring them okay and uh they are you know mostly uh, predominantly they are parallel predominantly they are parallel remember in these experiments we are not 100% accurate okay we are not 100% accurate and i will let you know where we are making assumptions okay so here we are like sort of making assumptions but these assumptions should be you know bearable like within the limits of error that we can bear to have like uh you know if the error is too acute or too much then of course uh that that would be invalid right so these beams are going to be parallel now if you're using a source of light which is close you can you know with the help of this diagram you can see that you cannot have parallel rays coming out you will have divergent rays okay from a point source which is close to you okay so in fact in this diagram what what are they trying to show that if you have a close light source the the, the uh, rays entering the eyes are divergent if you increase the distance to some extent almost parallel and if it is very distant then parallel exactly parallel is what they have written okay so yes so you know 
You see, whenever we draw sun rays coming from the sun in diagrams, we always make them parallel, always make them parallel. Okay, because sun is, you can say that sun is at infinity. What is infinity? Something that we cannot measure. It's so much that we cannot measure. I mean, the distance is so big. Okay. Okay, so now we will move this uh, screen. We will keep moving this screen and we will look for the image which is being formed on it. The, the point where we get the sharpest image. So we will, keep, we will move it closer to the lens and then farther away and then check where is the image sharpest. The point where you get the sharpest image, you stop it there and you mark it. Okay, the point where you get the sharpest image, you mark that point and you stop moving the screen. That mark will be your uh, F, principal focus. That point will be principal focus. The reason why you're getting that sharp image at that point is because that at that point, that parallel ray that entered the lens converged onto the principal axis. It converged onto the principal axis, and that's why you are getting a sharp image at that point. Okay. Also, the lens should not move. You should see here they are using plasticine. Plasticine to make sure that the lens stays at one position. Okay. So, uh, because F is going to depend upon. Miss, the again, your voice is breaking too. No, miss, it's okay. Uh, let me check my internet connection. Uh, let me check. It's fine with me. I can hear you properly. Me okay. too, miss. Yes, me too, miss. Too. Okay, Jazaka Lokara. Okay, please, uh, you guys can check your internet connection, maybe. Okay, so, so you know, if the lens is, uh, because, you know, the distance of lens is going to affect F. Okay, now what, now another thing, think of this surface, this curved surface as part of a circle. Okay, it is a part of a circle. Think of this curved surface as part of a circle. Now, of course, if you, if you continue to make that circle, this circle is going to have some radius. Okay, if I, if I, you know, make the complete circle, this curved surface is a part of a circle. And if I complete that circle, 2F, 2F means twice the length of F, twice the length of F. 2F is going to be the radius of that circle. Remember that, okay? So if I consider this one curved surface as part of a circle, 2F is going to be the radius of that circle. Okay, same is the case here. If I consider this curved surface as part of a circle, and if I complete this circle, then this 2F is going to be the radius of that circle. Now, my circles are not too great, but I'm just saying that if you continue this circle perfectly, you will see that 2F on both sides are uh, the, their radii, okay? Another thing, more uh, curves. Miss, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Miss, by saying sharp image, uh, it means less blur or uh, means from more far? It means less blur, meaning you, the edges should be yes. least blur, the, as less blur as possible, the, the sharpness of the image. Meaning sharpness of the image means okay. like, like, for example, you know, when the image gets too blur, you won't be able to read this word because all the because their margins will overlap with each other and you won't be able to make the letters and you won't be able to see. This is what we mean by sharpness. OK, when the boundaries of images are exactly clear cut and you can, you know, make out one image from the other. OK, so that is what we mean by sharpness. OK, uh, so more curved this. Uh, lens is going to be shorter is going to be the 2F. Why? Because more curved meaning smaller circle. More curved meaning smaller circle. Smaller cir circle will have a smaller radius and therefore 
a smaller 2f and hence a smaller f as well, meaning smaller focal length. Now, what is focal length? Focal length is the distance between the optical center or the center of the lens and the principal focus. That length is called focal length. This length is called focal length, small f, focal length, okay? So more curved the lens is going to be, smaller the focal length is going to be, okay? And more curved the lens is going to be, the more it will bend the light because more the refraction. Now, why? It has to do with the angle that the light rays will make with the curved surface, okay? So more curved the lens is going to be, more magnification because more refraction and smaller the focal length, okay? Okay, now is there anything else that I have missed? Okay, now this experiment is regarding what sort of images we get depending upon where we keep the object. Now there are different positions. They're starting from beyond 2F, then at 2F, then between 2F and F, and then between F and the lens, and then in some questions also at F, but they did not write at F here, okay? So this is a experiment that you can easily carry out uh, if you have these meter rule lens and screen and a light source, which is not too hard to get. And you can, you know, perform these yourself. And there are YouTube videos also available in which they, if you cannot perform, you can at least watch. And you can see uh, how the images change. I mean, their size, how does the size change? How do they get inverted? And how are they upright? And how is the image position dependent upon the position of the object? And I think I also uh, saw a simulation, but I was trying to search for it, but I couldn't search it again. But I remember uh, seeing a simulation where you can change the position of the object and see how that is affecting the image. So that was very helpful. Okay. Um, so these, this is asked in MCQs. They will give you objects at different positions and they want you to be able to predict um, the size and you know all, all these these three characteristics: image position, size of the image, and whether the size the image was upright or inverted, and also if the image is real or virtual. Okay, now what is that real and virtual? We'll come to it in a bit. Okay, um, is there any other point that I am missing? Okay, okay, another thing, since I talked about the curvature, so I'll talk about the power of a lens here, that I, as I just told you, that the more the curvature, more bent the lens is, uh, uh, it is a part of a smaller circle and therefore smaller F and more bent the surface is, more refraction of light, more bending of light, and therefore higher magnification of image. That means the power of the lens is going to be greater. What do we mean by power? Power is the ability of a lens to magnify an image. If a lens is magnifying an image too much, that means the power of lens is big, the power of lens is greater. And if the image is not able to enlarge, if the lens is not able to enlarge an image that much, that we say that the power of the lens is less. And also, so that means more the curved, less the focal, smaller the focal length and greater the power. Is that right? More curved, smaller focal length, greater the power. So that means the smaller the focal length, greater the power. That means focal length and power are inversely proportional. They are inversely related to each other. That's exactly what they are showing in this formula. Power is inversely proportional to the focal length. More the power, more bending, smaller the focal length. Okay, or smaller the focal length, more curved and therefore greater the power. Okay, now how to draw ray diagrams. This is very important. 
Now they have given these three points. If you follow these three points, inshallah, you will be able to, um, uh, you know, draw a ray diagram and figure out uh, the position of the image from the lens. What are these three points? Can anybody summarize? Do you guys know? I want to know if you know this. Can you repeat your question, Miss? Do you know how to draw ray diagrams keeping these three points in mind, following these three points? Do you know how to draw a ray diagram? Yes, Miss. Okay. Can you can you summarize? Yes, I can the first one. Yes, Miss. The first one, uh, first okay. we'll draw the lens and then the principal axis. Uh, miss, you're not drawing, sir, you say? Then yes, we'll yes. draw the principal. Okay. okay, okay, another thing, okay, just, just, just hold on, uh, uh, uh Another thing I forgot to mention is that principal axis itself is a pathway of a light ray. It is a pathway of a light ray, which is passing through the central prism of the lens, and it is undeviated. Keep that in mind. This is also one of the rays, okay? This is also one of the rays, light rays, okay? Okay, when we make an image, for example, let's suppose this is O for object and then A. If, for example, this is an object. We usually um, keep the base of the object on the principal axis. The base of the object, we usually keep on the principal axis, meaning and the rest of all the rays are coming from the top. Rest of all the rays are coming from the top. Only one, which is along the principal axis, is coming from the base. Okay, now you continue, Zainab. Then we'll draw a ray which is parallel to the principal axis. Yes, the that end. is the first point. Yes, that is the first point. So the ray which is parallel to principal axis. So make sure that your incident ray is parallel and also don't forget to draw an arrow head because we need to know where the light ray is going okay also these points should be marked okay and i would also write convex lens here okay then the ray would uh, bend yes and it will pass the point of principal focus f okay Let's see. Let me make it pass through this point. Okay. And so this roughly is my F. Okay. Roughly yes. Yes. Okay. And the arrows. Yes. Okay. So this is F, right? Um, right, miss. This is principal focus. Yes. Okay, another thing is that we have F on both sides of the lens, okay, and we have two F as well on both sides of the lens, reason being that light can enter through the lens from either side, okay, and images can also be formed at either side. So it depends upon the direction of the light rays. So that is why we have principal focus as well as two F on both the sides. Okay, so if F is here on the right side, on the left-hand side, again, it would be here. And it is always helpful to use a graph paper or some paper which has, you know, boxes made for these diagrams. Otherwise, it's confusing. Okay, so now we know that three boxes on the right side, so three boxes on the left side. Okay. But you know what? Yes. There was a mistake. No, there is a mistake here. Yes. That this becomes 2F. So that means my object is, is standing at 2F. Yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. My object is standing at 2F. Yes, Sara? Miss, I wanted to ask, how will we know that we will put the F3 blocks or 4 blocks from the middle uh, line? Okay, so you will be given the pertinent information in the question, okay? This is only for explanation. Of course, they will let you know, they, they will give you some information, okay? So when we, when you'll do past paper questions or when you'll come across questions, you you this will become clear, clearer, okay? 
Okay, so now my object is so now what is the second point here? What is the second rule? A ray through the optical center C, which is undeviated for a thin lens. So only one ray from the bottom of the image, one ray from the top of the image. Why is that important? Bottom and top are the most important points for any image because we want to know the size and we want to know if it is inverted or up upright. And all this, all this information can be obtained by looking at the top and the bottom. Okay, the rest we are not concerned. Okay, so, so another ray from the top, but this time, Zainab, you have stopped. The second point we are going this. Yes. So the ray from A to it will pass the center of the lens, and it will go straight because it yes. is passing the center. Yes, undeviated. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Then, so again, the arrowheads. Okay. Now, the third point that they have mentioned is that a ray through the principal focus F, which is refracted parallel to the principal axis, meaning that if this is the F, a light will pass through F, okay, like this. And then it will again bend and it will bend parallel to the principal parallel. axis. It will bend parallel to the principal axis, okay? So remember, these are the three rays that will come from the top of the image. Even if you draw two of them, that you will get the position of the image. It is not necessary to draw all three. These two are the most important. Okay, this line, I mean, you can draw. It will further confirm that your answer is correct. But these two are the most important. The one pa parallel to the principal axis getting refracted through the lens, passing through the principal focus. The other passing undeviated through the optical center, the other passing through the third one passing through the principal focus and then refracting and getting parallel to the principal axis. Okay, so here I B, I will use the term I B. Okay, now can you see the image is inverted, same size? Yes. It is inverted, same size, because you see the bottom is here. Why is this the bottom? Because the bottom, the ray that came out of the bottom of the object fell here. Okay, so uh, same size, inverted, and is it real or is it virtual? Real? Yes, how do we know if an image is real or not? A real image is always formed on a screen. Very and correct. it is inverted, it is not upright, and it is not at the same side of the uh, uh, object. Okay, well, real image, yes, you are right, it can be captured on a screen. That is one uh, way to find if, a real, if an image is real or virtual. Second thing is on a ray diagram, you will see that real rays will be converging to make it. Real solid rays will be converging to make it. Meaning, if you look at this particular example here, where the object is between the lens, between the optical center and the principal focus, where the object is between the optical center and the principal focus, again, they have drawn two lines, one is parallel to the principal axis, getting refracted to pass through the principal focus. And the other one is passing through the optical center undeviated. But can you see, if we just look at these lines, if we just look at these lines, you can see that they're never going to meet because they are moving far away from which they're never going to reach. How do we get the image? We extend the line, they extend the rays and wanna see where are they meeting. The point where they are meeting 
will give us the uh, position of the image. Again, the uh, bottom stays on the principal axis. Bottom, by the way, always is at the, at the, on the principal axis. Whether the image is inverted or upright, whatever, the bottom of the image will always stay on the principal axis, as well as the bottom of the object. Bottom of the object, as well as the bottom of the image, always stay on the principal axis, okay? Now, why, why did we represent um, these lines by dotted lines? Because they are not actual light rays. They are not actual light rays. The light rays moving this way, in this direction. I mean, we're talking about these rays. These rays are responsible for the image. There are other light rays. Light travels in all directions. But right now, we're talking about the light rays that are forming the image. Those light rays are passing in this direction only. This is only extension, diagrammatic extension, to find out the position of the image. And so the when you look at, when you look through the lens, so this image is visible only when you look through the lens on the other side of the object. That's real weird, right? So the image is larger than the actual object, and it is on the same side as the object and the same side of the lens as the object. And you will, you will see it will appear as if there's a larger tree behind the original tree. There's a larger tree behind the original tree, okay? So this happens when the object is between the uh, optical center and the focus. Of all the positions, of all the positions that I think are included in your syllabus or the ones that they have talked about in the book. This is the only example of virtual image. This is the only example of a virtual image. Okay, rest of all these other positions of the object are giving you inverted and real images. They're all inverted and real images. Okay, at 2F you're getting same size between 2F and F, you're getting big, in, uh, enlarged. Beyond 2F, you're getting small. So what's happening here? Is there any pattern here? Can you, is there, is there any pattern here? Yes. What's, what's the pattern? So as it is going farther away, as the object is going farther away from the lens or from 2F, the image is getting smaller and closer. And as the object is coming closer to the lens, the image is getting larger and farther, okay? Simulation is very good. You know, you should see the simulation. And then exactly at 2F, the images are the same. You can come up with a way to memorize these. Okay, they ask this in MCQs. It is helpful to learn this or you, you decipher some, some pattern. You try to find some pattern out. Is there a pattern to it? Yes? Is there any pattern? Okay. So how do we find out the magnification? Now magnification is the same thing. By the way, this is uh, written in the this yellow part. I uh, did not talk this to us. Yeah, this is the yellow part and yellow part is usually not included in IGCSC. But this is nothing difficult. Magnification, I mean, it's the same, you know, as you have in biology. Remember in microscope and magn uh, what is yes. cal calculate the magnification of the image, same thing. Okay, height of image divided by the height of object or the distance of image from the lens divided by the distance of object from the lens. <clears throat> That's it. Okay, and then magnifying glass. Did your teacher explain this magnifying glass? No. No. no okay, <clears throat> you guys find this chapter difficult? Yes. No, it's easy. Yes, miss, but now it's easy after reviewing it and then. Okay, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah, uh, uh, try to solve as many past papers as you can till you feel confident. Okay, till you feel confident. 
Now, um, okay, <clears throat> now this magnifying glass, see, when things are closer to you, they look bigger. And as an object goes farther away from you, they appear smaller, okay? Not that they get smaller, of course, the size stays the same, but they appear smaller to you. Why is that? That has to do with this angle, okay? And please excuse me for this, somebody drew these diagrams these pictures okay so it depends upon this angle that the ray makes coming from the image that the the ray coming from the top of the image that ray the angle that that ray makes with your eye when that image is closer to you the angle is bigger and therefore the image formed on the retina of your eye is bigger now as the object gets farther away from you that angle gets smaller. That angle gets smaller, and so it appears smaller. Now, if you ask me why is it that when the angle is bigger, the, uh, the image is bigger, and when the angle is small, the image is small, I don't know the exact details. Okay, I will have to look and study into it to be able to explain this, but this is all they have written in the book. Okay, if you want to go into the background of it, that I, I, I will need time to uh, look into it and, you know, to explain it to you guys. Okay, now let's see, let's, okay, is there any question? And this also is not included. This is difficult, this is confusing. Yes, uh, yes, Miss. Miss, uh, on uh, page number 129, uh, yes. in figure 31.1b, there are dotted lines, uh, drew, uh, drawn a uh, back of the con uh, cave lens so can yes. you explain those yeah again this is the same thing so these are not actual light rays but they appear to be originating from this so you can say that this is a print prin um the virtual principal focus you know which is which is symbolized by f and a small dash what does it mean meaning that it, it is not being formed by actual rays but they but you can call them virtual rays because you know the rays appear to be originating out from this point okay so this is you can call it a virtual principal focus okay it is not the actual remember i told you there are two ways of finding if an image is virtual or real first of all practically speaking it can be captured on a uh, on a screen or on a, any surface secondly uh, actual light rays are making, are making them. Okay, Nabil, Nabil, please mute yourself. Okay, so, so that that is what they mean. And such rays, which are not actual rays, are represented by dotted lines. Okay, like for example, in a mirror, when you see your image in the mirror, it seems as if you are standing on the other side of the mirror, right? It appears that way. You are standing on the other side of the mirror. Yeah. Somebody exactly like you is standing on the other side of the mirror looking at you. But when you look behind the mirror, there is nobody, right? So that means that image was virtual. It was not on any screen. Okay, that's, a, that's an example of a virtual image. Okay. Okay. Is, is that- yes, but, but isn't our- Yes. Isn't our image on the isn't our image on the like on the back of the mirror? So it's like still there, right? <laughs> okay, then you see behind the mirror. Uh, have you ever seen behind the mirror? Is there any Sara standing behind it? No. That <laughs> <there's>... <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> It's not, but it's like when you move, then it goes away, right? But when you're standing, it will still form on the, like on the back of the mirror, I guess. No, but it appears to be behind the mirror. It appears, but it's not there. Okay. It appears, but it's not there. Meaning that if you keep a screen behind the mirror, will you be able to capture it? Will you be able to have it? Will you have your picture on that screen? No. If you keep a screen behind the mirror, will you be able 
to have your picture or your image on that screen? No. Now, have you seen projectors that many teachers no. use? These projectors uh, in presentations and in many classrooms teachers use, they have slides made and then they, they, have pro, they use pro projectors and a big enlarged screen forms on the screen, on the, you know, on the wall or on a screen, a big screen appears. Now that is an example of a real image. Why? Because it can be captured on the screen. It's, so it's enlarged and it's real and it's magnified. Yeah, and it's enlarged. So that's an example of a real because they must be using some, you know, some sort of lens that's doing that job, right? So you to so in order to find out if an image is real or not, you see if it I can capture it on a screen. If you can, then it's real. Any other question? No, no, oh, miss. Yeah, no. you, know, you know the thing is when we can see something, seeing is believing, right? When we can see something or we can relate to something that we have seen, it's easier for us to understand. But when we deal with stuff that we have not seen or you know that we have not come across in our daily lives, then it is hard to imagine. And then things get difficult. Remember in science, you have to imagine, okay? So it's easier to imagine stuff that you have seen and it's difficult to imagine things that you have not seen. And so that's where we get confused. Now, this concept of virtual image, yes, it is difficult, I mean, to understand. And, you know, the reason behind it is that, you know, we are used to, I mean, this is understandable. Okay, screen is getting captured on a, uh, sorry, image is get, get, getting captured on a screen. So, yeah, we understand. But what is this virtual thing? We cannot understand how is it on the same side of the object? you know, and all of that. So be creative, be open, and also tell yourself that it is not necessary that just because we are used to something, that is the only way. There are many things that we are not used to. We are not, I mean, we don't see those things in our daily lives, but they are still possible. Okay, that's what physics is about. And the reason why people find physics difficult is because of this because of this imagination thing. You have to imagine a lot, okay? And now recently they have, you know, come up with these videos, these simulations, they all help you in your imagination. If it is difficult for you to imagine, go ahead and watch these videos, watch these simulations. They will help you in your imagination, okay? Now, question number one, a small torch bulb is placed at the focal point of a converging lens. When the bulb is switched on, does the lens produce a convergent, divergent, or parallel beam of light? Just this one question, the rest of the questions we'll do later. Okay, so now this is my lens. Okay, this is the principal axis because the Shah Salah has been called and it's already 640. Okay. Now, if I keep a torch bulb at the focal point, okay, let's make four boxes, my F, okay, and if, for example, this is the torch, okay, just keep, keep it simple, OA, O for object, okay, now, when the bulb is switched on, does the lens produce a convergent, divergent, or parallel beam of light? Now, let's follow the three rules. Let's follow the three rules that we just came across. Uh, parallel to principal axis, an incident ray from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis. This is my principal axis, PA for principal axis. And then it should pass through the focal, principal focus. And where is my ruler? Cannot find my ruler. Okay. I'll just draw without the ruler. Okay. And then the second one is passing undeviated. Okay. It will just pass through 
Okay, I'm trying my best to draw without the ruler. Okay, now they are parallel. Okay, now I can make a third one and that third one would be, no, I cannot make a third one. No, I cannot make. Remember the third one was, uh, the third ray would pass through the principal focus and will get refracted parallel to principal axis. But the problem here is that the object is exactly at the principal focus. So I cannot, there is no light ray passing through the principal focus, okay? These are the only two rays I have. Why? Because my object is at the principal focus. Now, can you see, now these are the only two rays that will help me. Now, can you see that the two rays are parallel to each other? They are parallel. I mean, my diagram is not accurate, but they are parallel, okay? So they are not going to meet. They're not going to converge here. Neither are they going to converge on the other side of the lens. If I make extensions, if I make extensions, because they are parallel throughout, no matter where. Okay, so therefore, the answer to this question is that uh -huh. parallel beam of light. That will be the answer, parallel beam of light. Okay. Okay, is there any question? No, miss. No? Okay, I have a question. If you don't have a question, I have a question. Please find the answer and then let me know. What sort of image will this, will these rays make? Virtual. Virtual? No. Why? Miss, uh, real? No, my question is, this is my question, okay? If they are not meeting, they're parallel. They're not going to, because we receive images. Miss, no, no image will be formed. There will be no image. Infinity. Because they neither meet at the same side and they are not even meeting on the opposite side. Yeah, you know, but I'm not sure. I was figuring this answer out when it was time for class. So I haven't figured it out. So let's figure it out together, okay? And so in the next okay. class, we'll, we'll do the end of chapter questions. Have you guys done the end of chapter questions for this chapter with your school, in your school? We never do end of chapter questions in school. Yes, uh, yes, miss, we do.